we'll look at some of the questions related to proportionality and how we solve them and the relationships that we get from the formula with Newton's law of gravitation as well as the force in an electric field. So firstly, let's have a look at the force of attraction in a gravitational field. So we have this formula, which we will be given on our formula sheet, which is F being our force of attraction equals G, which is a constant first mass times your second mass over R squared. Now from that formula, we get three, we can derive three things. Firstly, we know that F is now directly proportional to mass one. Simply, we can see that it is directly proportional. Then if we increase mass one to two mass one, so two times the value that it was, our force, because it is directly proportional to our mass one, is therefore increased to double that of what it was. If we look at our second derivation from the formula, F is directly proportional to the product of mass one and mass two. We see that from our formula. If we increase mass one to two mass one, so double what it was, and we increase our second mass to two mass two, which is double of what it was, our force, because it is directly proportional to the product of the masses, is therefore increased to four times the original force. Now we get that from two times two, because it is doubled mass one, double mass two. If we multiply the coefficients, we get four. Our third derivation is that F, our force, is directly proportional to one over R squared. We see that in our formula, F is directly proportional to one over R squared. It is not directly proportional to R squared, only directly proportional to one over R squared. If we were to increase R to two R, so double its, its value, then R squared increases to four R squared. That is simply two R squared. Then we see that because we are our F is directly proportional to one over R squared, our F is therefore becomes F over four because our R squared is now four times that which it was. And because it is directly proportional to one over, we times it by one over four and therefore our force is now divided by four. So it is minimized by a factor of four. A few things that are NB in this section and you must remember, firstly, often they will try and trick you with the units that they give you. So they may give you your, your mass in grams or your mass in if they give it to you in kilograms then you need to you know that you must use it in kilograms or one might be given in a, in grams if they give you your radius often they will give you say centimeters you need to convert that before you put it into your formula second your manipulation and intuition intuition sorry intuition is key in this section so Manipulating the formula, you need to know how to use the formulas, how to manipulate them, what is directly proportional to what, which values fit in where in the formula. You need to be able to manipulate the formulas in order to get the values that you're looking for. And you need to use your intuition to see what is happening as you increase and decrease by the factors that you are given. So let's look at two examples just to illustrate these points. First example, on a planet, your acceleration due to gravity is 4.9 meters per second to the negative two. If the mass of the planet is twice that of Earth, what is the planet's radius compared to Earth? Now we can look at these two formulas. We know that Fg is our gravitational force is equal to G m1 m2 over r squared on our formula sheet. And Fg we know is also equal to mg. We substitute mg for fg in this equation and we simply solve for g and we get g we cancel our m's because they are equal and g equals gm over r squared big g which is now our constant which is on our formula sheet and m which is the mass of the planet that you are working with so on earth it would be g which is 9.8 equals the constant g times the mass of earth over the radius of earth squared and that would give you 9.8. So as we said here, our, on Earth, 9.8 is G constant times the mass of Earth over R squared. Now we look at the planet. So the planet, they've told us is 4.9 meters per second squared. So we put it equal to G times 2M because we are now doubling the mass. So it's twice the mass of Earth and the radius is equal. No, sorry, we are, sorry, we are solving for the radius. So we could put an x r squared just to 
to show that we are solving for it but if you do it intuitively as we're going to do it now you don't you wouldn't need to put the x you can simply see it so 4.9 equals g times 2m over r squared so now if we we know that g is a constant so in both of these equations g is a constant we can cancel it so therefore 4.9 equals 2m over r squared now we know that g 4.9 is directly proportional to our mass so 2m double the mass would give us 2 times 9.8 from earth if we were to double earth's mass it would give us 2 times 9.8 which would give us a force of a gravity acceleration due to gravity of 19.6 which is double that of 9.8 however we are given 4.9 so while the 2 would double your 9.8 to 19.6 in order to get to 4.9 we need to intuitively understand that you would have to divide by 4 in order to get 4.9 therefore we know that r squared would have to be 4 because our g is directly proportional to 1 over r squared and if we want to divide by 4 then our r squared would have to be 4 therefore r squared equals 4 r squared therefore we have increased our radius by 2 remember we must square root that 4 because it has been squared therefore our radius is now 2 times that of earth which on this planet will give us 4.9 meters per second as our acceleration due to gravity in our second example if we look at this one so the radius of neptune is 4 times that of earth but the g value is the same so the g value on neptune will also be 9.8 calculate the mass of neptune in terms of earth so we use the same formula g equals g m over r squared remembering that the m is the mass of the planet so if r equals 4r then g equals g constant times the mass of neptune over 16 r squared remember we now square this 4r because your radius is squared so 4 squared is 16 and r squared now in order to get the same g value m would have to be 16 m i don't know if you can see that intuitively but i have always solved these intuitively so let me try and explain to you how we would go about doing this. So we see that our g has to remain constant. So something on the right over here has to take place in order for us to get an equivalent of gm over 16r squared or gm over r squared equivalent. Now, because we've got 16r squared, there needs to be a cancellation of that 16 from the numerator in order to keep our g constant. Now, the only way that that can happen if g is a constant over here, our big g is a constant, so that'll never change. The only way for that to happen is for our mass to be increased by 16 times, giving us 16m. In which case, you would get a cancellation of your 16 with your 16 in your denominator, and you'll simply be left with gm over r squared, which is the formula for g equals 9.8, and therefore g value would remain unchanged on Neptune. So in that case, in order to get the same g value m would be 16 m and therefore neptune's mass is 16 times the mass of the earth then lastly we just take a look at electric fields now the manipulation and solving takes place the same way as in gravitational fields only the units change and the value the values that they represent so obviously your force is now it can be attraction or repulsion and Obviously, your charges are measured in coulombs and so on. However, your concepts remain the same. So if we look at F equals K, Q1, Q2, so those are your charges over R squared, remember, in meters, then we know that F is directly proportional to Q from our formula. So if we increase Q to QQ, then our force doubles to 2F. In the same way, our force is directly proportional to the product of Q times Q. So if we increase both q to 2q and little q to 2q then we are given our f will now be 4f because we've increased about two times two times which is four our f is also directly proportional to one over r squared we see that from our formula in the same way as our force in gravitational fields is directly proportional to one over r squared so now if we were to increase r to 2r our r squared is therefore 4r squared always remember to square this because your r your r in your formula is squared so therefore your force would be f over 4 because your your f is directly proportional to 1 over r squared and if r becomes 2r it becomes 4r squared and therefore you times your force by 1 over 4 which in 
inevitably divides it by 4 and therefore your force is divided by a factor of 4.